today I'll be rating Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage, a 1994 side-scroller for the Super Nintendo. It is based on the cartoon that goes all the way back to 1940, when I was a teenager. The story is, Bugs Bunny is trying to deal with an out-of-control animator who keeps drawing up danger for him. His goal is to get to the animator and defeat him. What's up, Doc? Bugs Bunny has many ways of dealing with the enemies who impede his progress. One is an unlimited supply of pies. There's also a kick, a butt squash, and a powerful spin attack that also drains your life meter. In addition, there are a large number of Acme products littering the landscape, some of which are used to inflict damage on the enemies. Since the attacks in the game are a little complex for a side-scroller, the game teaches you all the moves during the intro, and it also has a practice mode. As you have probably already noticed, the graphics are fantastic. The backgrounds, the animation, the large sprites. The year 1994 has never looked so good. Now one of the main things I look for in a side-scrolling platformer is stage variety. Rabbit Rampage definitely has that. Each stage is its own world and has its own set of enemies. None of the enemies are used again in the other stages. Adding to the variety is an unpredictable use of bosses, with some bosses only appearing at the end of a stage, some having none at the end, and some stages having a boss as the only enemy in the entire stage. The music in Rabbit Rampage sounds fantastic, and it's probably taken directly from the cartoon. There's definitely a classical feel to it. So far I've been mostly praising the game, but a lot of that has to do with the aesthetics. There are other aspects of the game which don't feel as polished. Take for instance the controls. They don't feel responsive enough to react to the fast moving things around you. The action of hitting enemies with pies or kicking them feels delayed, often resulting in you getting hit in the process. Also, during the mid-air portion of a jump, the D-pad feels overly sensitive, making it hard to land exactly where you need to. Compounding the control problems are some issues with the hit detection. The best way to describe it is, while the sprites look large on the screen, their outer edges are hollow. Sometimes this can help you. But most of the time it makes enemies harder to kill. Kicks often miss their targets, which is hard to believe when you look at the size of Bugs Bunny's feet. Some platforms such as tree branches have the same problems. There's a branch right here which only has a tiny speck that can be landed on. Only a perfect jump will get you up there. The enemies may be the worst part of the game. They seem to be there not just to kill you, but to annoy you. A lot of them take multiple hits to kill, so you end up engaging in a lot of long drawn out battles. Most annoying are the projectiles they throw at you from off the screen. It seems like the developers wanted you to slowly transverse the stages, stopping to collect everything and using Acme products. Instead, it is more effective to just sprint through the game as fast as you can, engaging in battle only when necessary. This strategy also cuts a very long two-hour game down to a reasonable one-hour game. 
It does appear the developers knew their Bugs Bunny stuff. So much so that the game can seem quite strange as someone who can't remember the cartoons. Or have never seen them at all. There's a lot of unexplained silliness to the game, but this doesn't affect my opinion of it. I can't blame game companies for wanting to be faithful to the source material. Rabbit Rampage does have a couple of cool things that most platformers don't have. One is an item that lets you place a save point at any spot in the stage. There's a lot of strategy in choosing where to post it. Do you post it as soon as possible, or do you risk getting past the difficult part first? Another cool thing is that the stages don't fully reset when you die. If you damage a boss, but die in the process, it'll still be damaged when you reach it again. This works out pretty well since the bosses in the game can take about 20 hits to kill. I kinda wonder if this is a mistake in the programming. While Rabbit Rampage may have been made with children in mind, the difficulty is geared more to adults. I was able to beat it, but only after a lot of practice and frustration. The developers must have known it was hard because the option screen allows for up to 10 lives. They also give extra continues and one-ups if you earn a high enough style rating. This rating is based on how well you use your Acme products to kill the enemies. The last stage is a nightmare. It wants to kill you so bad it throws everything it can at you. There are cats hopping around, cats falling with umbrellas, cats on a train, thunderstorms, bags of money, safes, horses, cats cutting holes, bottomless pits, and even the Titanic. It's actually quite hysterical, but you'll be glad once you get past it. The game ends with a very satisfying battle with the animator, where you'll have to destroy his paint supply. For me, Rabbit Rampage was good enough for one playthrough, but I don't think I'll be coming back to it. The graphics almost carry the game, but there are just too many things holding it back. The end result is a mixed bag. The rating is coming up, and thank you for watching Gaming Systems. Enemy attack, oh, okay.